the war in Nigeria, he sent a mail that will be visiting his son and his professor Fred. Lake is that? Lake is in Ernesto uh, Hina. Yes. So uh, it is a privilege to have him. He's visiting, you know, and we want to. Uh, maybe take a weekend to share the word of God. I, want, I just want to give us uh, a head song, you know, and so we prepare. Maybe end of uh, November or sometime first week of uh, December. The brethren have not decided yet, but as we decide, we will tell you praise the name of the Lord. In privilege, please, I want you to mark your calendar. Whenever the announcement is made, Please let's make ourselves available because uh, it's a privilege, it's paid, his uh, transport is coming, but let's enjoy whatever the Lord has given him to give to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's a lovely time. Praise the name of the Lord. So we will uh, uh, further announce um, the details of this coming. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want us to listen very attentively to the message. Not that we've not been listening, we have. But let's just take um, additional, put on additional listening. Yes. You know, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Father, we come by the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. We come in the name of Jesus. We look up to you for mission. And we thank you because. You will feed us. Amen. You will feed us. Hallelujah. Amen. You will employ all goodness, Amen. all grace, Amen. all mercy, Hallelujah. all faithfulness, Amen. all joy Amen. unto your people. Amen. No one will leave here empty, Amen. but will be filled with the goodness of the Lord, Amen. with his pleasure, Amen. with his grace. Lord, as we look up to your care, blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Very familiar scripture, First Kings chapter seventeen. Praise the name of the Lord. We just want to uh, take an aspect of God's hand in our lives, and the essence of God's hand in our lives is to preserve life. Is to do what? To preserve life. Our sister just gave a testimony. But ultimately, when God does something for his child, it is to preserve life. And when we talk of life, actually, we are talking of eternal life. It may not look like it is, but it is what it is. It's eternal life. And May God grant us listening ears. When I say listening ears, I'm not talking as with respect to just listening to what uh, God will have me give to you this month, this afternoon. But listening ears, that is to have um, an open heavens. To have an open heavens. To be able to decode the mystery of salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let me make something very clear to us. Salvation, the Bible in record says this common salvation. Well, there it was talking about the regenerated life. A life, a man coming from a, a life of sin and acknowledging Jesus Christ and accepting him as Lord and personal Savior. He called it a common salvation. That is, it is common. It is made open to everyone. But beyond that, beyond that, there's what we call the mystery of our salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The mystery, the, 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 the ethos, the thinking, the life, the purpose, the essence, of salvation. At that point, it becomes a mystery. 
It becomes a mystery, not a mystery that we cannot be, that cannot be solved. It's a mystery within the realm in which God makes available his word to us. That any seeker will have opportunity to have to understand the mind of God. Any seeker, any seeker, anyone who comes by faith and says, God, I want you to open my heart so, so that I can understand. Two things are said here. One, the common salvation which all of us have. Two, the mystery. For example, it says the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. You know, and he came to us. We received him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If it was not a mystery, the devil, Satan, wouldn't have caused it to be that the Lord of glory be crucified. He would have, in all his being, prevented it. It's a mystery. That's why he didn't understand it. But by the grace of God, we have the word of God, we have the spirit of God, we will understand. Amen. Once you are birthed into salvation, that process of salvation, God has opened a door to all of us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says we are betrothed to God. We are engaged to God. Now, if not everybody gets engaged, gets married. Sometimes the engagement is for so now we are engaged, we are betrothed to Christ. But there is coming a marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb. And whoever remains engaged will be a partaker of that marriage supper. That's why we gather. Praise the name of the Lord. For God to unveil himself to us, to make himself explicit, clear, so that we can walk this race with joy and gladness. Now, we call it a mystery. It's a mystery, the Bible says, to those who are without. But to you, the script Jesus said, it's not a mystery. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. To them who are without, it is not given. But to you, it is given. So we should know one thing clearly. Yes, it's a mystery, but it is given unto you to what? To do what? To know. To understand. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's where some work has to be done. Now, you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes, it talks of what? Working it out. It's an aspect of faith. For faith without work is dead. Yes, you have the salvation. But in that salvation, you must grow in faith. You must understand it more. And that's an aspect of discipline. The, the disciplined seeker. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And we desire that we all be indeed seekers of this glorious path. Amen. Amen. First Kings chapter 17. And Elijah, the Tishba, who was the inhabitant of Gilead, said unto her, the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand. There shall not be dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. Verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherit. Now, Cherit has a root meaning with covenant, with a covenant, a covenanted life, that's the cutting of the blood, the cutting of flesh to bring forth blood. Now, Cherry speaks of covenant. Anything we do within the realms of Christianity is the covenanted life. Your life and my life is covenanted. We don't just live anyhow. We don't just float and anything goes. No. It is, we live within the confines of a covenant. A covenant has, has determined clauses, determined goals, uh, what you give, what you take of a covenant. So we don't just live in a void. We live within the principles of God's holy covenant. 
and in his covenant he has promised to bless you. Like for Abraham, he says, I bless you. Anyone who blesses you is blessed. Anyone who causes you is cursed. So there is a covenant with us. God has cut a covenant by the blood of the Lamb that covers all of us. So let us endeavor to live within that covenant life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So go to the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, verse 4, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Now, note the word there, commanded. It ties to the topic of this message, God's hand in our life. Note that. We'll talk a little bit about that. Now, go back to that verse 4. It says that he shall be that when thou shalt drink of the brook. Now, the brook is a small stream, a very small stream. God is sending his prophet in a time of famine. Now, he gives him his, the first step. Go to a brook. I have commanded the ravens. Now, the ravens are unclean birds. They are unclean birds. But is it this same raven when um, uh, God destroyed the earth with flood? It was the raven that Noah sent out first that they would talk. Now, what we have to learn here, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Brethren, whatever situation you may be in, God is always there to do the miraculous for you. Amen. Imagine the ravens are going to feed a full grown man, a bird, a bird, a handy bird. You feed a full grown man. I have commanded the ravens. So, no matter the situation, God has set a command to cover you, to uphold you, and to keep you. Only you have to be within the covenant. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I've commanded the ravens to feed him there. Go on. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. Obedience. And that's another thing we will learn in, in this transcript here. Obedience. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. Verse 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now, see, uh, look, flip it to the other side, spiritual. There is a miraculous work that God is doing, feeding his own. Remember, it is a time of famine. It's a time when there was no rain in the land. The world has gone forth. There will be no rain, as we have today. The Bible says there is a famine that is coming. It's not a famine of bread, physical bread, but it's a famine of the word of God. Now, we are in the times of those of the famine period where the word of God is cursed in the land. The word of God is indeed cursed. Because why is this cursed? What did Jesus preach? Jesus preached the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God he preached. But today, it is not the kingdom of God that's been preached. Something else has been preached. People talk about prosperity. People talk about games. People talk about different things. People talk socializing the church and uh, trying to make the church a, uh, a happy go area. Happy, happy, happy go. No, that's not it. That is not it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When we come, we come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Praise the name of the Lord. It may be interesting, it may not be interesting, but it is interesting to those who are led of the spirit. The kind of mind cannot comprehend these things. And that's why, brethren, we need to be in the spirit at all times. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, the bread, the morning and evening oblation will be sure. That is, there will be daily provision for you. Amen. Amen. The bread of life. There will be a sure provision of God's bread spiritually and God's bread physically. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Brethren, we ought to believe God in these times that we are. I'm not going to dwell on these ones so much because that's not the subject area. We're just passing through. Verse 7. 
And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Imagine God told somebody, a prophet, Elijah, go to the brook Cherith. I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. And in no time, the brook dried up. Oh, of course, we might be familiar with situations like this. God tells you something. He tells you to go somewhere. And after a while or so, it appears the door of that place is closing. Now, the door appears to close because God is intending something higher for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Mind you, it was a brook. Brooks dry up. They do dry up. And of course, it did dry up. Because it's a small stream. A small stream cannot take you to glory. Amen. Amen. It's enough to, 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 to give you food to keep you, to sustain you for a while. But it is not enough to bring you into the fullness of the revelatory eternal life. Amen. 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 As that when due. Amen. Amen. Not that it will not sustain you, but it will dry up. And once those who feed on bro brooks, who drink brooks, once it dries up and they don't know what to do, they begin to get cantankerous in the church. They begin to find faults. They begin to do things. They begin to plan things that God did not plan in the church. And that's why we should know. Oftentimes, we are taken into brook areas. And when we get into such areas, when they dry up, it's time to move forward. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It's not a time to stay there and uh, glorify the place or say, begin to say, oh, God used this brook to feed me. Now, what God has done, it has come to an end. God wants you to take a step forward. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. And God is going to take us giant steps. Well, simple steps. There are giant steps in the long run, but there are simple steps in, the, in, 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 in its immediacy. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Note, it is the based on the word of the Lord that yeah. our brother moves. May God help us yeah. to hear his word. Yes. Amen. And get thee to Zarephath. Zarephath speaks, um, speaks of, he has a root word with, to refine, a refining process. Now God, the brook shut up. Now God wants to bring his own to a refining process. Amen. Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Brethren, sustenance is of the Lord. God will sustain you spiritually. You may wonder, your brook may have appear to have dried up. And... You try, sometimes you try to come into the realm of revelation, you don't get it. You've been walking in prophecy and it looks as if it dried up. Things are drying up in your life. It's time for the Zarephath opportunity. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Get thee to Zarephath. Brethren, let's get to Zarephath. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That belongeth to Zidon. And dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Brethren, there is sustenance, there is provision. God will employ every resource, employ every goodness, employ every favor, employ every machinery to make sure his own sits comfortably in his presence. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes to begin to understand and appreciate this great God. This excellent God that we serve. Verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And I see she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks. 
that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. Now, look at this carefully. In the uh, prior verses, the Lord said something. He said, I have commanded the widow woman to feed them, to sustain them. Now, look at the, the voice of this lady. Does it signify in any way that this woman had heard from the Lord, in any way, had visibly from the Lord? No. That's the mystery. Visibly, God did not tell her, Elijah is coming. Prepare. No. From this, it is evidently clear that God did not speak to her face to face. Neither did she hear any audible voice. But careful note, he said, I have what? Commanded. And that is where we have to take a retrospective look, take an inward look in our present life to begin to fall into God's mercies and do what God is saying. Of course, it's not everyone that have this kind of dealing, silent dealing. And we are going to see what, what makes this kind of dealing very successful. There are some, the Lord spoke clearly to them. He said, I will show you many things which thou will suffer for my sake. Remember Saul of Tarsus. Saul, who became poor. God came to him, spoke with him. But in this situation, it's not so. This is a situation when God has spoken in the heavens that I have commanded a widow, woman, a widow woman to feed thee. And this widow woman never physically heard from God. But it was an attitude that brought her into the mindset and will of the Father. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What do we learn from this? There is something we learn. First of all, go to verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. Now, look at the scenario. Somebody says he's collecting little, two little sticks to make cake for herself and her son to die, eat and die in the family. Now a prophet comes and says, no, go and make for me first. Then, <laughs> later on, you can make for yourself. And after, make for thee and thy son. Verse 14. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Now, one thing is missing on the earth, rain. Rain is missing. Now, we see this lady has been commanded of the Lord without her knowledge. And she comes in fulfilling God's grand process, divine process. We need to learn something from that. That is, brethren... We don't need the moon to fall down, the sun to, to, to shine brighter for you to know that God's hand is upon your life. The easiest way you can function knowing God's hand is upon you is to stay in the place of obedience. Amen. To stay in the place of obedience. That is where this woman stayed. She never heard a voice. She fulfilled divine counsel and life was preserved. We will see that. Life was preserved. This woman did not die. How do we relate it to our today? Brethren, some of us, no one is here by accident. First of all, no one is here in Canada by accident. Oh, you can tell stories how you get to uh, Canada. How you decided in your home. How you and your, your wife sat down. Should we go to Ghana? 
or go to England, or go to Sokoto, or move to the, you, both of, you all decided. You, you can tell that story how you decided. But in that decision process that landed you ultimately to Canada, God's hand is in it. It's not by accident. This woman was simply living her life. And I want us to know something. When God, we talked of covenant in the earlier scriptures, we are a people of covenant. The Israelites were in Egypt. They were a people of covenant. And that's why the dealings with them were very different. When God judges them, he's dealing them. He's, when God is judging his own people, it's not like he's judging Egypt. It's a different ball game. The sorrow and the cries you have in the church is different from the sorrow you have in the world. Because when God comes and deals with you, it's so that he grows you and I up. So that we can begin to understand him better. It is not to bring us into condemnation. But there is therefore now no condemnation to them which I cry, Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So that's the covenant life in which we walk, the covenant of freedom. Whatever, whether you walk in pain or in joy, you are walking in freedom. Praise the name of the Lord. Because it's a covenant life. And it is made possible by the blood of Jesus Christ. So the, the way God deals with you is very different. So we see this widow, God is dealing with her as a covenanted woman. Praise the name of the Lord. As a woman who, had, who has a covenant relationship with the Father. Amen. Amen. And that's why, look at the word Lord there. Lord means the self-existent God. When you see it in capital letters, it talks of Yahweh. It talks of Yahweh, the self-existent God. Now, the one who is self-existent is saying, the barrel of meal shall not waste. So whenever you see this, shall not waste means it shall not stop. It shall not stop. Brethren, for our provision, for our sufficiency, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Amen. Amen. The barrel of meal here means corn flour. It shall not waste. Amen. Provision for bread shall not cease. Amen. As long as we stay in the covenant. I have commanded the widow woman. May God help us to see ourselves commanded of God to be where we are. If you don't see it, you will miss the opportunity and miss the plan. This woman never heard from God, but she fitted into God's purposes and desires. Praise the name of the Lord. How did she do it? That which which she had, which she said she will eat of it, she and her son and dad. It means she came in obedience, first of all in obedience, then gave what? All of herself. Amen. That's the kind of covenant life that is going to sustain life, that is going to please the Father. Brethren, let's don't come to God in any half measure. Or have bread. You give out of your abundance. And I'm talking giving. I'm not talking of money. I'm talking of a heart. A heart that gives. The Bible says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. All these things. Shall be added unto you. This message is for anyone. Who would desire, who wants God's heart? Say, Lord, I want your best. God's best manifests itself in very strange and mysterious circumstances. When we use the word mysterious, mysterious is not to hide anything. It is to unveil to you. Praise the name of the Lord. If God allows things to remain mysterious, mysterious, then nobody will be saved. But he's made it a mystery so that he can blind those who will not be saved. And open to you such as should be saved. Praise the name of the Lord. First of all, you are here because you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
or else you would have been playing golf somewhere else or go, attending parties or sleeping on your bed. You are here because there is a covenant pool on your life. And may we surrender to that covenant pool, that pool of our Lord Jesus Christ upon us. May God help us to surrender completely Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have commanded the widow woman. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And how do we relate it? As we said, in the little things that affect your life, spiritual things, give your best. Let's don't even take it far. Let's bring it close here. Brethren, God works within a body. It's a principle. God is not raising a shining star. One big star and everybody looks at that star. That star is Jesus. Apart from Jesus, any man who puts himself as a star is a fake, is a demon. Is a wicked one. A star where everyone will bow to. Where he says something everybody must, must follow. And where he's the only one who is the prophet. He's the only one who is the priest. He's the only evangelist. He's the only miracle worker. He's the teacher. He's everything. And his father. He said, call no man what? Father. May God help us in the name of Jesus. So God works in a body. And if God works in a body, works in a people, and teaches and moves a people, is that the cloud of glory, when you see the cloud move, you move. Yeah. He's talking to a body of people. Now, a body of people have come here. Brethren, obedience has to start in your Jerusalem. For example, let's talk to ourselves. When a body is to move forward, it says, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Take, for example, a prayer meeting. You don't belong to a body to identify with the body. No, you belong to a body to identify with Jesus Christ. The essence is Jesus. I'm just trying to get through the, the, the lines of obedience. Because the scripture says something. If ye be willing and obedient, you will do what? Enjoy the good of the land. The good of the land is not cars. It's not houses. Those are additions. Those are things that will come. Those are things that are available to every to a believer and a non-believer. Anybody who works hard will be blessed. It's a principle in life. If you sow, you'll be blessed. So it, is, it has nothing to do with God's blessing. It has nothing. When God looks to, at you to bless you, he doesn't take material things and blesses you. That's a curse. From the scriptures, when Abraham was to, about to die, he had many children, apart from Isaac. The Bible records that to the children of his concubines, they were gifts. But to his son Isaac, he gave him all. We are not to live our lives by collecting gifts. We are to collect Jesus. He is the all that we are to collect. So I go back to that principle of obedience. Because if you are willing and you are obedient, you will enjoy the good of the land. The good of the land is not, as I said, the riches. Because the riches, the physical riches, he said, my God, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory what by Christ Jesus what is the riches in glory is it BMW is it a big house in Rosedale no the riches in glory 
by Christ Jesus, my God shall supply to you all riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What are those riches? Those are true riches. That's eternal life. Eternal life. May God help us seek the kingdom of God first. And all these things, brethren, in all your seeking, seek eternal life. Seek life. That is going to place you on the path of prosperity. Then these things will come. These material things will come. And when they come, they will not be a stumbling block to you. One, when you get these things and they become a stumbling block, for you to worship God, then it is not of God. Why? The scripture says, the blessings of the Lord, what? It maketh rich, and it does not add sorrow to it. When God blesses, there is peace, there is help, there is joy, there is contentment and satisfaction. Brethren, as Christians, we should know where to draw the line. When it comes to material riches and blessings, you should be, those are the things. Why I'm stressing on this, it's the thing that distracts. They distract. And those are the things that Jesus Christ was tempted. He was the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eye, the pride of life. When we get these things, they fulfill those things. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I have commanded the widow woman. That widow woman was commanded and was in the right place. And did the right things and gave it all her best. And it was equal to God commanding her. I have commanded. May we... Know in our life that God has commanded us to be where we are and giving all our best. It doesn't need extra revelation, it just needs obedience. You don't need the revelation to, 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 to trust God. You just need to obey God. God says, says, stay here, you stay there. God says, go here, you go there. And if you are waiting for the miraculous God to speak to your ear, you may or may not hear it. God may speak through your daughter, speak through a friend, speak through somebody. It behoves you and I to listen, to know when God is speaking. So that we don't miss it. Now, how easy for this woman to miss it? Ah, Elijah, aren't you a selfish prophet? You said I should make this hope for, for you first. What kind of believer are you? No prophet in this land, even the prophet of Baal, will not say that. But what the scripture is teaching us is that she gave her our best. Brethren, let's give our best to, to the service of the Lord. Let's give our best. Let's give our time. Let's give ourselves. And when we do that, when we do that, when we do that, what the prophetic word came to us last year, the, in the, to the new year, he said, uh, what our sister quoted, um, you do... Yeah, divine ability to do extraordinary things. I don't want to push more. I, would, I wanted to go further, but I don't want to push more. I want to dwell in this. I have commanded the widow woman. And we read that there was no physical command to the woman. The woman did not act as if somebody had been instructed. If somebody had been, if she had heard from God that Elijah was coming her way, she wouldn't have answered like this. But she didn't hear. All she did as a covenant woman, she stayed in the place of covenant. Brethren, the flesh will pull you down. It's time for fellowship. The flesh says no. Your spirit is willing. He said, if you be willing and obedient. Why do we stress fellowship? It is important. The early church, they met daily. They met daily. They met every day. We are meeting at our convenience. And yet, even at our convenience, it is still inconvenient to many. 
We are not talking to ourselves to pat ourselves behind. We are talking to ourselves so that we can press on further. To come into this realm where we can begin to understand God's mystery and fall into God's plan for our lives. You and I, in the name of Jesus, will not walk this part of life and be seamless Christians and be empty Christians. But we will be Christians with faith and life and pressing on to eternal life, to preserve life. Now, go forward, verse 15. Let's quickly get there and pray. 15. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house, and did eat many days. Praise the name of the Lord. Life is being preserved. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember, Jesus quoted this. He said there were many widows. But Elijah was not sent to anyone but the one in Zarephath. May God send emissaries our way. May God send angels our way. May God send his Holy Spirit our way. Why did God pick this lady? God pick me. I thought I wanted to hear say God pick you. God sent Elijah to this woman. Verse 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee? O thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him into a lot where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And she, he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O oh my God, I pray thee, let this child so come unto him again. Amen. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, if this woman had had the barrel of crude and oil not filling the... Um, the, the, the corn, the, the, the flour, not seasoned, and the child died. Would it have been a happy ending? It was to preserve what? Life. When we walk with God, when we walk with God, it is to preserve life. It's talking of eternal life here. It is to preserve life. God sent his son. The son revealed took away darkness, brought light and immortality to life through the gospel. Praise the name of the Lord. Life is brought to light through what? The gospel. Let's believe the gospel. We'll quickly see one person, you know, who was sent and did know he was sent. Can we uh, look at... Um, Genesis chapter 37. No, no. Take it to Psalm 105, please. Psalm 105 from verse 16. Moreover, I call for a famine upon the land. Another time of famine. Just as we are in the time of famine. He broke the whole stack of bread. There was no bread in the land. Go on. Now, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Now, when you and I know the story of Joseph, when Joseph was going through all those ordeals, did God say, I'm sending you? No. But divinely, he sent a man. God sent a man. Through all the difficulties. 
You might be going through challenges and say, God is not using me. God has sent you. May our, spirit, our spiritual tentacles wake up to know you are in Canada because God has sent you. You are not in Canada principally here to work. You are not in Canada principally here to make money. If that's what you think, you got it wrong. You are sent. For as many want to receive it, receive it. But if you think you came here to better your life, fine. But this is the true story behind your journey. God sent you. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Does that look like someone being sent of God? You might be having challenges or difficulties in your family, in your life. God has sent you nevertheless. It doesn't look in any way as a man whom God has sent. What is God looking out for? Faithfulness. Go on. Until the time that his word came. You might be here doing your life, things normal, employed, having a good time. But let the word of God come to you. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The word of the Lord will try us. And that's, you see where the, the, the widow was tried? The word of God tried her. Let's don't buckle up. In circumstances, know that we sent man. If a man knows he sent, he will work according to God's principles and mercy. May God help us. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen to this. Genesis chapter 37, which complements it. 28. Genesis 37, 28. Now, this is repeat. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Does it look as if someone was sent? Now, look at Genesis chapter 45. No, uh, let me see. No, that same one. Let's see 35. Genesis 37, 35. I think. Let me see 36. 36. 36. Yeah, 36. I didn't write it well. 36. Okay. The captain of the guard. Okay. Fine enough. They are still telling the story of uh, Joseph. Then go to chapter 45 verse 5 now therefore be not grieved Joseph talking to his brethren nor angry with yourself that he sold me hither for God did send me before you to do what? preserve life why you and I are sent is to what? Preserve life. There is coming a death in the land. And our staying in God's will will preserve our life and the life of many others. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I'll stop there. But the key thing we learn here is this, brethren. Remember the widow woman, God said, I have commanded. And we saw nowhere where God commanded. We see in Joseph, God said, I sent him. And we saw nowhere where God said, I am sending you. It is the word of the Lord that came, what? And then try them. So we enjoin ourselves, plus me, we enjoin ourselves to stay committed to the will and mind of God. If ye be willing, if what? Yeah. It's not my word, but uh, let's, let's read it. If you are willing and obedient, praise the name of the Lord. Um, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, put it there. We'll pray on that. If ye be willing, one, there has to be a willing attitude and obedient 
ye shall eat the good of the land. Willingness and obedience. Willingness and obedience. We are going to pray that God should put a willing attitude. That when even in the midst of challenges, in the midst of difficulties, will be what? Willing. What God, your problems may be tough, they look big. What God is looking at for you is to be willing and obedient, to be willing to follow him and obedient to his word. Once you are willing and you are obedient, you will enjoy the good of the land, which means life will be preserved. Praise the name of the Lord. When, la- when the spirit of life comes in, death is taken away. Life will be preserved. There will be the absence of death. And that's what we want in our midst. The absence of death. In the things you do, the absence of death. The absence of wicked things. In the name of Jesus. The absence of um, miscarriages. Amen. Those are death. Death structures. Women obedient to what? Preserve what? Life. Let's begin to pray. Oh, my son.